industry. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. But before we get into today's guest and all the side hustles that we could possibly be doing on the side, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, the professor, the brain, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm afraid that our guest is going to give me shiny object syndrome. So is that just because of my head? Yeah, no, no. I'm just a little, a little trepidatious, if you will. So everybody knows my guest, probably. It's Nick Loper from SideHustleNation.com. If you don't know about Nick, every day he's hustling. He's an entrepreneur. He's involved in a variety of pro projects. But his main purpose in life is to help you earn more money, pay off debt, learn new skills, use your free time more productively, and escape the rat race. Um, he's got a book, uh, which I'm really excited to talk about, uh, The Progress Journal, a simple daily planner to make meaningful progress and uh, on, your, on your most important work. And so, um, Nick, let's, let's just get into it. Let's just skip the pleasantries. Yeah, we, we've done this before. We can, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cut to the chase. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think this is the, I think this is the second time Nick has been on. I don't know if he's on the best passive income model or the auto passive income, but we love Nick Loper. So Nick, thanks for coming back on. Well, and, you um, thanks for the invite. I like, did you pause the, the treadmill there? You know what? Um, I got a Peloton now, so I don't feel as compelled to be on the treadmill as much. Okay. Okay. And truth be told, it's probably a little short, short circuited and I've just been too lazy to get a new one. I, I I was on my third, and <laughs> when the third one died, I've been relegated to the um, to the closet. Now this is my my closet office, and the only reason the uh, banner is behind me is to block the uh, backlight from the uh, from the window. Yeah, no, I mean Scott and I are, are fully in Peloton mode. We're competing. We highly recommend it. Um, you'll you'll you like it, right, Scott? I love it, man. I love uh, going on there and competing against you and uh, Scott Bossman, even though we're all remotely uh, located. <laughs> and uh, there's nothing like feeling good about like whomping your friends or being whomped by your friends. <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately, I've been being whomped, not doing any whomping, but that's all right. It's, you know. It's a long it's time, man. It's a long burn. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, there you go. You got your next sponsor for the show. Yeah, there you go. So Nick, tell us a little bit about the side hustle um, show in the sense that you're, you're constantly hearing and learning about different side hustles. There's got to be a few out there that have really sort of, you know, made you uh, stand up and take notice. What, what are some of your favorite side hustles right now? You know, hosting the show is like the best and the worst thing because you're like, Oh crap, I could do that. And I remember thinking that the first time I hung up with you, it was like, you know, he makes it sound so, <laughs> so this whole land flipping thing, I, I could do that. And I know that's the mark of, of a good episode. The really the three big business models uh, come down to selling a service, selling a product or selling an audience. And the audience kind of has the most flexibility, but it's also usually takes the most time to build. Um, so oftentimes people are going to start on, uh, the service or product side um, and service being, you know, right out of the gate, like you can stick your flag in the sand and say, Hey, I'm a freelancer. I'm a consultant. I am a, you know, house cleaner, knife sharpener. I'm a whatever. Um, and go out, find some business, find some clients and, uh, and it's off to the races. And on the product side, which I guess you categorize the land business as a product business because it's buy low, sell high. That's the same business model as Walmart, as Amazon, as any of these other stores. Um, but that's been a popular one. Um, even just, you know, I'm, one of my favorite guests is the flea market flipper. Who, the flea um, market flipper. Just makes his living buying and selling stuff, you know, random stuff from the flea market. And, you know, he's kind of leveled up and gone with like 
bigger, bulkier items. He's doing like freight shipping, uh, you know, all across the country. But it's the same thing. It's, you know, it's buy low, sell high. And he's just going out every month trying to find new deals and has built a six-figure business doing just that. And, you know, we've talked to people doing the wholesale thing, the private label thing on Amazon. Um, the product business is kind of exciting, but it's some moving parts um, and some upfront investment involved. And then the audience business, so like um, what you and I have with the podcast and with the blog uh, content, um, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You can sell digital products. You could sell, you know, your own consulting services. So you can go a lot of different ways. Or you can do the affiliate advertising thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? It, seem, it seems like, uh, and look, maybe I've just been spoiled by land, but, you know, like, it just seems like um, <clears throat> that, like, some of the, some of these seem like they just might be dead, like the affiliate marketing. I know there's a lot of affiliate marketing, pe people that make good money out of affiliate marketing out there, but it just seems like it's just so old and antiquated. Is that still like a popular thing or, you know, like it just seems like a slow burn as well because you're going to have to build that audience. Like you're saying, is old that really still you guys are selling dirt. That's like the oldest business on the planet. <laughs> okay. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. Now you, you got me on that one. But I, I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, is that like affiliate marketing I, I, maybe I'm just thinking of it wrong, but like affiliate marketing, am I not, like having to build that audience up and like tr just drive traffic at these links. I mean, or am I playing the, the arbitrage game where, you know, I'm like the old school Google stuff, you know, like that running ads to products I can make commissions on. Yeah. That I was think actually my first uh, is, is it sustainable? Yeah. Is it sustainable? Are these models long-term sustainable? Like, you know, the affiliate marketing piece of it, FBA, is that, is that what you're saying, Scott? Well, I mean, you know, it, it just seems like it just seems like there's easier ways or easier business to get started than affiliate marketing. You know, like it seems like like with land, I mean, I, land is not necessarily easy. OK, it's like an easy model, but it takes some I get, you know, it takes some setup. But in, you know, like literally within a couple months, you can have a sale. Like I, when I started two months in, I had a sale, right? Like from the time I mailed to the time I sold my first property. You know, and it was a substantial amount of money. Affiliate links, it seems like, you know, and I'm just picking on affiliate links, but like some of these other models seem like they're just really a slow burn and it takes forever just to kind of get the traffic there. But maybe I'm just being naive. You know, I think there is something to that. There's always a, a ramp up period, especially, you know, you kind of create content, trying to get it indexed into Google and Google wants the best content in the world. So when you're first starting out, you're probably not qualified to write the best content in the world. Um, so there's a practice, there's a learning curve to, to get over there. But once you do that, once you have stuff that's on the first page, like that can drive totally passive income for years. And like, that's right. kind of um, yeah. been exciting for me. And it's kind of been uh, a focus in the last couple of years, finally, you know, realizing that I was leaving a lot of money on the table um, by not having, you know, affiliate, opportunities affiliate at least presenting them as an option right on certain pages the google game is going to be slow but youtube as you guys know stuff can get indexed immediately so if you have a, a youtube video on a popular keyword on a popular topic you can start making affiliate income from that right away and then the other channel that's been popular has been pinterest as a um less so as a social network but as a as a content discovery platform as well, because people will use it similar to Google um, for searching for specific keywords. And if you've got uh, the article and the pin image that can show up there, that can also be a source of pretty consistent evergreen traffic. And then has the added benefit of some spikes of virality um, as, as people get, uh, as your content gets repinned. Right, that's a good idea, I, the, the, the YouTube thing. And I guess that, that's where I've seen I guess that's where you see a lot more uh, focus today is you'll see pro people doing product unboxings or product video reviews, video reviews. And I guess then, then they have the, the links to the affiliate links in the comments. Right. Mm. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean that in, you know, that sort of segues into when you're talking about, you know, creating evergreen or passive income today's sponsor, which is flight school. Learn more about land investing, over 16 weeks with Scott Todd, who's done over 800 deals. Let him be your land investing Sherpa, take you up the mountain of land investing quickly, safely, and efficiently. And also he can do it in three days now with 
Flight School Live as well. Learn more, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. See how I did that, Nick? That's good. I got to work on my uh, sponsor transition game for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I hired a coach. Um, <laughs> you, you, you've done hundreds of these episodes too. Yeah, I, I, did, I did the mid-roll, the mid-roll coach right there. So nice. what's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in side hustle world? The worst advice in the side hustle world. Um, probably the biggest misconception is that it's, uh, it's easy. I mean, you're going to invest a lot of time, even if you're, uh, even if you're starting like a consulting practice and you're like, I'm going to charge 50 bucks, hundred bucks an hour for, uh, for my time. It's like the ramp up time to try and get that client. Like there's so much overhead, um, still a super fast business model to start, but like, you know, all that time up front. I mean, similar, like you guys are going to send out a hundred mailers, you know, before you get that response. And so it's like, there's a numbers game element to it, or there's this time investment, um, that I think is worthwhile, but a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of uh, get rich quick gurus, um, online that will have you believe that starting a business is easy. And I believe it's easier than it probably ever has been, but, it's still, you know, there's still some fundamentals um, that go into it. And, and then you see a lot of stuff and you'll see these links on Side Hustle Nation too, where it's like, oh, um, you know, sign up for this uh, survey service. And it's like, your hourly rate is going to be awful from that. Like, let's just be upfront about that. If you're willing to work for two, three dollars an hour, you know, taking these surveys, like, that's fine. If you're otherwise just sitting on your butt watching TV, like, fine. And that appeals to a certain segment of the population. But if you're if you're willing to do that kind of speculative work, like invest it in your own business, like, you know, build something that has a little bit more upside potential. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Um, let's, let's transition into the book. Um, the progress journal, a simple daily planner to make meaningful progress on your most important work. So let's let's just unpack it. Right. So, you know, of all the things you could write about, why a progress journal? This was, so number one, I'm obsessed with progress. Um, I think that's, uh, Tony Robbins calls it the one word secret to happiness. Like how can I make consistent progress toward my goals? So I, I think they're, and I've for years been publishing uh, progress reports on, um, on the blog. Um, so it was aligned with the brand. But for a lot of last year, um, and we had a, you know, a new baby in the house and stuff. So I'm going to throw that out. as like not an excuse, but like kind of an excuse. Um, I find myself a lot of times like in maintenance mode and like just, you know, with the day-to-day -day operations and the content demands and the email. And at the end of the day, you kind of like, well, what did I really do? Did I make progress towards something meaningful? And we were actually able, we were really fortunate to be able to take a, a month off last summer and, you know, I had all this creative energy built up uh, after that. And it was some of my most productive time because like, you know, was only able to work during the, during the vacation, like maybe an hour during the kids' nap times. And so when I came back, it was like this catharsis of like content creation and all these, you know, cool stuff was happening. And what I realized what it was, was like, you know, having the short term, like project sprint goal to work towards. So that's kind of what, um, the you know each of the four week blocks in the progress journal kind of centers on and then there's daily accountability tracking towards that some micro habit stuff that i found effective in you know forming different um you know business and health related habits and a, a gratitude component and then being um, really clear about your priorities for tomorrow today so when i sit down when i do have that block of time tomorrow i know exactly what i'm going to tackle Scott Todd, he sounds like he's preaching to the choir here. He is, man. Like, <clears throat> it's just, it's just really about like the old saying, like, you know, plan your work and, and work your plan. Right. You know, it's just really about being laser focused. And um, if there's a journal that can help people do that, it sounds like a great investment. <clears throat> yeah. It was something that I created. Like, like I found myself, like I was better off when I was doing these five things um, on a consistent basis. And is like, hey, if I'll, I'll put it together, if somebody else buys it, like that's fine too. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, it, yeah that's, that's great. That's great. Um, happier and more effective in five minutes a day. So let's, let's just unpack the most important work. 
And I think for a lot of people, figuring that out is the hardest part. What is the most important work? Because you were just saying in your day, it is important for you to respond to email, let's say, right? But it's not the most important. Um, and so you can kind of get into, you know, what I think, I forgot the productivity guy that said, like, you're kind of always shining the, uh, uh, the runway, right? You never get off the ground. And you're just always kind of below there. Um, so how do you get to, okay, this is my most important work? Yeah, for me, it's centered on the idea of KPIs or key performance indicators. Um, and in my business, that tends to be, um, you know, podcast downloads, how many people are paying attention to me in audio form, what's the traffic look like to the website, um, how many people have joined the email list. Those are kind of uh, leading indicators. And then revenue and profit is kind of a lagging indicator. I found as, as those other numbers go up, like the profit has always followed. And so I focused on growing those metrics. And so the, the kind of sprint projects that I do are usually related to expanding some of those um, metrics. Like one of the, um, in, in December, my sprint goal was to create this Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. It was like a daily micro podcast called the money making minute. And it, um, you, with the idea, with the goal being like, okay, maybe I can reach more listeners in audio form in their home and eventually, you know, transition them over to become podcast listeners. Uh, you know, once they jump into their car for their commute. Oh, I love it. I love it. Very cool. Um, what, what were the, the steps that got you into creating the side hustle nation? Man, it was a lot of soul searching, to be honest. I was working on my original side hustle, which was a, a footwear comparison shopping site. Like Scott said, it, it played the arbitrage game between driving traffic from Google ads and then what that traffic was ultimately worth on the affiliate sales uh, through through the shopping engine. Um, and that business you know, was the vehicle that allowed me to quit my job. Like it was fantastic, had a great run, but it kind of had plateaued and maybe was kind of starting this long, slow decline. I was like, you know, what else do you want to do? What do you want to be known for? What do you want people to find when they Google you? And it was this, you know, idea that I like talking about, you know, different entrepreneurial stories and business ideas and creative ways to make extra money. Like, that stuff was really exciting to me and, and still is exciting to me 300 and something episodes later. Um, and originally, um, my plan was like, okay, I will, I will test out all these different side hustles and, and share my results. And kind of started that way at the beginning and, and there's still a little bit of an element to that. But really what kind of took off was the podcast, like showcasing other people's stories saying, look, look, I'm not the world's foremost expert on this stuff, but you can learn from people who built pretty incredible businesses, usually starting on the side. Um, and, and the show has kind of grown from there. Got I'm, I'm laughing because uh, Nick, Nick and I are kind of, whether he knows or not, we, we kind of have a, a similar wavelength because I can't tell you how many times, you know, like back in the day before the internet or heck, maybe even during the internet, like you get like success magazine or entrepreneur magazine, you flip through and there's like another type of a, uh, of a business. I guess the internet had to be around, but there, there was another type of business opportunity. And I thought, Oh, well, I want, I want to be the test pilot on all those things. Like I want to run them and like judge them, evaluate them. Like this sucks. This is not, and then do a report on them. Yeah. And like, it, so, so almost what Nick was saying. And I think that, I think that, you know, when, when you do that, it really just kind of, I'm, I'm sure Nick and I kind of have a, a similar background to where, you know, we, we always, we worked for the man. We probably wanted to get out of the rat race. And, you know, may, maybe we couldn't find that one thing that would work for us or the thing that we connected with. And I truly think that that's really the, the secret to, to really any type of success in, in a side hustle is finding that one thing that you can connect with that one business. Because like I started off in this, in this example, talking about the affiliate links that doesn't connect with me. And so if I went out and tried to do it, it'd be, it'd be probably a, a miserable fail, but maybe, maybe Nick has success with it. And so, 
it's kind of cool to see how Nick has taken that and, and basically allows other people to share their stories of what's working for them so that you can kind of shortcut it and maybe connect two things together and create your, your own thing. Yeah, the business models, the, the episodes that do the best are like the, uh, the ones that are relatable, uh, repeatable, and, you know, low startup costs. And that's why, you know, Mark's episode about land flipping, starting with, what was it, $900 or $300? Uh, I started with 3000 but okay. my buddy Duran started with $800. Okay. I feel like yeah. there was a story of like, you know, three parcels for 300 bucks a piece or something. Um, yeah, yeah, 10 parcels, 300 bucks a piece, yep. Oh, okay, it was 10, okay, okay. Yeah. And, um, and people were like, in, in your step-by-step -step thing where you're like, okay, uh, out-of-state property owners, uh, they owe back taxes, you can, here, here's where you can find these lists and here's where you can find comps. And it was just like step-by-step-by-step by step by step, and you're like, okay, this guy just laid out a system. I'd never heard of this business before. Maybe I failed in other businesses or other side hustle attempts, but it's like, I never heard of this opportunity. Maybe I should give it a shot. Nick, I have a question for you. So like, you know, you, you deal with a lot of, you deal with a lot of people, right? Like you, you, you talk to a lot of people, you encounter a lot of people. I think that one of the things that holds people back is, um, and it, like it, it held me back for a long time, is I wanted out of the, the rat race but then at the same time, I've got this comfort blanket around me called a paycheck coming. So I, I may have been miserable in my job, but I basically had this protection and, you know, I could, I could complain all I wanted to, but the money sure was pretty dang good. And so then I get a fear, right? Like now I'm fearful of taking action. Now I'm fearful of making a mistake. What do you, what do you, you know, like, what do you tell someone or, or what kind of advice do you have for someone that's sitting there? and they want out, but yet they have some level of fear. How do, how do you move through that fear? Well, you're 100% you're right. It's super scary to take that leap and say, okay, I'm going I'm to be 100% responsible for cutting my own paycheck now. And, and even you know, when I was at the position of quitting my, my job, um, um, revenue history and everything from the shoe business was like, am I allowed to do this like weird a couple beers before, you know, I felt comfortable, like, you know, laying that on him. And it was just like this huge weight um, off my shoulder. So that's one reason I advocate the side hustle, like, you know, build something up on the side. I would not recommend, you know, jumping off the cliff without a parachute and trying to figure out how to, you know, replace that income uh, on your way down. Um, the other component of it too is, you know, a lot of people are like, how am I going to replace my income? Um, hopefully you're living below your means or, you know, living affordably, um, the real number you want to pay attention to is replacing your expenses. Um, and if you can do that with your side hustle, or you can kind of get it within striking distance, we say, well, uh, I'm not quite there yet, but with an extra 40, 50 hours a week to dedicate to it, I'm pretty confident uh, that I can get there within a few months. Yeah. I mean, it's got, you and I both did that. So Scott, it took him 17 months and three days to replace his fortune 300 income. It took me 18 months to replace my investment banking income, but we did it systematically. Um, you know, we we're both married. He, he was way farther along with his family than me. I was, I was about to have my, you know, first child, but even still that those fears are there. And I think, you know, what you're saying is so true, sort of, you know, just, you know, being in that place where, you know, well, even if I lived on ramen for the next year, that's that's it's worth it right to invest in myself and build a better future and a better life for my family than you know kind of being stuck in cubicle hell just getting a paycheck so i can you know eat out at panera three times a week right <laughs> one thing that's come up and I'll, I'll pose this question to you one thing that's come up uh, recently in the side hustle community is how do i justify you know, spending time trying to build this business that's somewhat speculative um, in my few limited hours that are supposed to be family time, you know, in the name of, you know, hopefully having more family time down the road. Like, I'm curious how you guys have uh, combated that in, in your own lives and in your community. Scott? You know, Nick, that's a great question because like the one, the one thing I would say is that if, if your partner's not on board with this, 
with that why, then you're probably fighting an uphill battle. You'll never win that battle. And I've seen it too many times where yeah. one person wanted something, the other person didn't. But like what I have, what I have seen and what I have found is that um, essentially if, if that why is there, why this is, why this is important. Like for me, my why was that I knew that I knew that any time my, my executive position was going to be eliminated. Like I could see that right on the wall. And so the, the why became, look, if I don't do this, if we don't do this, if we're not successful, then what's going to happen is I'm probably going to lose my job at some point. And we had just moved into a house and we're going to have to pack up and move somewhere else. And I don't know where that is. So we're going to relocate everything. We kind of did that anyway, but <laughs> the, the, the story, the story was, is that that's the why. And my wife's like, you're right, let's go do it. And so, you know, it kind of gave me the, the permission slip, if you will. It kind of gave me yeah. the, the supporting and the backing to go do it. I've seen people who try to do this where they face resistance from their significant others, their spouses. They don't understand why you, you should be content with what you have. You have a good job. So just stop here. What's, what's, why do you need more? And it just kind of just shows me that the why is not there, right? It's, it's more, that might be a self-centered why, because I hate my job or I want out of the, the world, uh, the corporate world. And it's not necessarily selling them on the big thing of this is what we can go do together. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, with Scott on that. I, I think the only thing that I would say is that, you know, let's say, let's, let's like take a guy like Matt Forbes, right? So Matt's got four kids um, and he's married, he's building a house. He's got a big life, right? Now he was smart about it. He went to a boot camp with his spouse. So then she was aligned. She understood. She was fully on board. He, he didn't leave it up to, you know, uh, a summary of a, or a cliff note summary of this is what I want to do right? Because he wouldn't be able to do it justice. But when he took her to a boot camp, she was able to see for herself without Matt's sort of lens on this is what life can be. Because now she's seeing other people in the room that are already just like Matt doing deals and making a huge difference in their life with this model. So now all of a sudden something theoretical becomes real and now you get alignment. So because of that, now Matt is able to manufacture time, right? So he can get up a little earlier than he was and work in his land business. He can go to bed a little later and they can work on it together in his business. So those golden hours don't need to be sacrificed with the children, right? Um, to do this. But on the weekends then, he can spend those golden hours with the kids. But maybe instead of going out to dinner and a movie, they can do this business together and manufacture two more hours and then go, you know, watch Netflix or something like that. Yeah. So there's always a way to do it within, you know, everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. It's a matter of, you know, how badly do you want it? How much energy can you push towards this, this goal in the system to accomplish it? And I think it's just really a lot about energy management in that sense. Does that help answer the question, Nick? No, it does. It we've heard some cool stories from the community of parents getting their kids involved in, in the business. Um, uh, an upcoming guest is, uh, is an Amazon arbitrage shopper and you know, her son is like in elementary school and, and he's like asking her now, Hey mommy, can you pick up profit. And it's like, Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Like, I love it. Like teaching these kids uh, at a young age. Cause it's like, I'm, I don't know. I was trying to sell baseball cards at the end of the sidewalk. Like, you know, there's a whole, whole new realm of, of business models uh, available today. But, you know, to your guys' point, it's like, um, what's the quote? It's like, you know, good is uh, the enemy of great. And it's like, okay, if things are okay now, like you say, you, you've got this job, like this is what you're supposed to do. Like, but you're, you're always looking at that next, uh, that next thing. So um, there, there may be more out there. I think, I think the other part to that too, and, and um, you know, I, I think that, um, the, the fact that the fact that someone see, like when people go down this path, I guess what I'm trying to say is when people go down this path, sadly too, is they, they go down the path and then they get to the point where it's time to add people to help them build the business so that they can manufacture time by, by outsourcing or building a VA team or doing whatever. And then they get scared. They get scared because they've never hired someone or they get scared because 
they've heard horror stories and then they don't do it. And then all of a sudden, like I, I know one guy, he's like, Hey, I've, I made a very good passive income doing, doing land. And, but then it was taking away time. So then, then, it, then he knows that, right. It was taking away the time that I wanted to create. And so I kind of just moved on from it. And I'm like, why did you move on from it? You had something <laughs> successful. And it, it always reminds me of this guy. He, he worked for me and um, he told me about this business. Mo- <laughs> he told me about this business model, like that he created. And like, I thought it was, I thought it was crazy, stupid, ridiculously successful. And what he did was he went out and again, this is way long time ago, early, like in the mid nineties, he went out to this apartment complex and he basically told them, Hey, listen, I'd like to offer your, um, your residents the ability to pick up their, gar- their garbage. So, you know, in an apartment building, you take the garbage and you walk it down to the dumpster. So what he That's said right. was, listen, you put your garbage by your, by your, um, by your door, we will come twice a week, like garbage day, pick it up and take it, take it to the dumpster, right? Like not even taking it to the dump, but take it to the dumpster. And he told me he got this apartment complex and he got like 60% of all the clients and he had this massive income coming in. He had people doing the work for him and all this other stuff. And he's, I'm like, why, what happened? I don't understand. He's like, I just, I closed it down. I'm like, why, why did you close it down? <laughs> and he said, because I got scared because I had to go buy a truck for the business. I'm like, that makes no sense, right? Like, so we get, to, we get to success sometimes and then it requires us to step outside of our comfort zone, even as little as going by a company truck and we freeze and we backtrack. I didn't believe this guy I told him, I'm like, you gotta bring me some proof. Literally the guy brought me all kinds of, con- like two days later, brings me this big stack of stuff, all these contracts and everything. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's all these things that you can do to kind of short circuit that fear. I mean, you can do fear setting exercises like Tim Ferriss recommends, and you can just kind of break down your fears and get them on paper and then solve them. Right. Um, you know, another thing is you just ask your question, ask yourself the question, what would a successful entrepreneur do in the situation? Right. Well, act as if, well, a successful entrepreneur would buy the truck, right? They wouldn't be stuck in, in fear mode. They would, grow their business. They would go for broke, right? Whether it succeeds well, not or not. even going for broke. It's like, you've got revenue coming in to justify the expense. Yeah. Yeah. But it, at some point it's, it's almost like that's what entrepreneurs do. Like we're t- constantly testing things in 80% of the time they don't work. It's getting to that magic 20% that does work. And then, you know, building it from there. So, um, Nick, I, I think that, uh, your mentorship has been, has been great this podcast, but I want to transition now into your tip of the week, a website, a resource, another book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Tip of the week, um, kind of spin off uh, what we've been talking about in creating the space in manufacturing time. The most effective thing that that I've done over the last years from a activity standpoint has been to stack all my calls, all my meetings, all my recordings up on one day a week. Um, historically, I had uh, no meetings Fridays. That was my rule for a long time. Um, and then I was like, holy crap, I get a lot of stuff done on Friday. So I was like, what if I had like no meetings the rest of the time? I was like, well, can't do it all the, every day, but um, without being a total hermit. Um, but stacking everything up on one day has freed up you know, these bigger blocks of time uh, the rest of the week to actually make meaningful progress on those KPIs, on those projects that, uh, that you decided were going to be important. I love it. I do that on Mondays and Fridays, actually. So um, welcome to the world. Got to add that extra day there, Nick. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Um, were you the one that introduced me to cold showers, by the way? Are you still doing that? Um, actually, starting... Tomorrow, starting uh, March 6th of uh, 2014, kicked off a 500-day streak of cold showers. But uh, alas, uh, the 500-day the, the streak ended and I uh, haven't, uh, haven't been doing consistently since then. Wow, that's impressive though. Wow. Um, all right, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Well, I just want to say first, I've had like, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of days of warm shower streak. So I, I don't know. <laughs> there you I, go. I don't know anything about it. Hey, Mark, check out this book. It's by, uh, by our, one of our favorite authors, Mike Michalowicz. 
It's uh, Clockwork, Design Your Business to Run Itself. Good read, uh, especially kind of what we talk about, about you know, building a self-running business and uh, definitely worth uh, a read for anybody in our audience. Yeah, uh, he's coming on the podcast too. I know, um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So yeah, just, um, just finished that one myself looking at, um, okay, what's the, what's the queen bee role in my business? That was an interesting read. The queen bee, I, you know, I, between pumpkin plan, um, the first one, which is like a little angry on, and then uh, profit first, which, and then this last one, Scott, which is your favorite? Uh, I'm going to say pro I like profit first, man. I do like that. I do like that book. Nick, how about you? Uh, this was the only one of his that I've read so far. Oh, you got to get profit first. You'll love it. For sure. Um, if you do any kind of consulting, get the pumpkin plan. So hopefully that helps. All right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Nick Loper and how he's changing the world one side hustle at a time at sidehustlenation.com. Um, his podcast is amazing. And then check out the book. Just go to, um, I'm sure it's on Amazon, but if you just Google Pro the Progress Journal, a simple daily planner to make meaningful progress on your most important work. Um, that hasn't been out too long, but it's got five-star reviews all along. So um, there check you it go. out. Progressjournal.net is the shortcut there. Progressjournal.net. So Nick Loper, are we good? Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. This was fun. Awesome. Anytime, man. Scott Todd, are we good? We're great, Mark. Well, I want to thank the listeners again and just remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Nick Loper from SideHustleNation.com is if you do three little things. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at TheLandGeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. So please do that. It really helps. And um, you know, are we going to do this, Scott? One, two, two. three. Let, Let freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>